Dear Diary, today I take the next step, the next step in being an ADHD life coach at Indigo Hub. I can't believe it's happening. I want to build, create and discover a place for us to truly be ourselves. I think this journey will be... Shh, the Indigo Diary. Dear Diary, welcome world. Welcome to the Indigo Diaries. And it's been a while since we've been here. And welcome to a series three, The World Through Our Eyes, with your host, me, Tasha Hicklin. The Indigo Diaries is a podcast that is one to learn about ADHD and neurodivergency through others and our own experiences. And it's been a while. It's been a minute. I moved house, went on holiday, took some time off, but also didn't have time off. So uh, I'm really excited. This is my first one back. And this week, pick the brain session which is questions from what we've seen and we look quite in detail and explore ways forward if there is one. So without a doubt, we know her very well. We welcome back, Holly. How are you doing, Holly, today? Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm excited to be doing this with you again. So Holly is a former public and private school teacher, 20 plus years in the field of coaching and special education. Currently, she is an integrity integrative executive function coach and all her details are below but if you're following this series then you'll know she's been here twice now so this is her third time so she's no she's no stranger to the listeners so holly this is quite a big topic today we did shame before which we and i love how we started with so huge and now we're back with resistance versus avoidance yes this is a big topic we we were just talking about how much this affects all of the individuals that we work with. Mm. What, yeah. what What are you, like you said, that's a big topic. Like what do you see makes this such a huge topic? I see that everyone struggles with this in some way and it's such an individual experience and it's almost like this cycle of not being able to move forward or resisting or avoiding and then it kind of feeds our inner critic and then the inner critic can use can you know it just it feeds it and it can use that against us um and it's just so individual what we're all experiencing internally yeah and it comes back to a lot of this is internal yet again and and what i find which is when you brought this topic about resistance versus avoidance is I don't think that this is talked about enough. Uh, I don't really see this ever talked about. Um, and especially like what I noticed in the neuro in the neurodivergent world is that resistance, we're, we're usually resistant because of something that we don't want to do or something that we can't do or don't have the capacity for. And then we avoid it, but then we bring on, like you said, that they're negative external messages that we're not doing it right we're not doing this we're not doing that that's then lead to it but it all comes from somewhere and that's I suppose that's where we're going to dive deep into this so it really is kind of one of the entities of shame that I see in in, with the clients that I work with it is I agree I see the same thing absolutely so like we obviously we thought about how to do this and we thought that maybe looking at resistance and then avoidance and then how they integrate because they do so holly what would you say from your kind of perspective is resistance you know i i learned this actually from seth perler's work so i just want to give him credit that he, he's the one that i've really um he's the one that's really made this topic overt and and talked about it and i almost picture it as like a separate being or this force that shows up whenever we want to start to do something, whenever we want to make change or start to do something beneficial or do something that's hard and overwhelming. It's just this feeling that something is blocking you. And oftentimes if we're trying to make change, I talk about this a lot with clients, there's going to be discomfort because our brains like to keep the status quo. Um, so it just, it heightens anxiety and it's a cycle that can be really hard to break out of. And and what, like when you were talking there, what I'm seeing, it's almost like between you and the action or the task or the stuff, there's almost like a blockage, like something physically block. It's not obviously physical, but there's something that like an emotional or a thought that is blocking you from 
doing that. And yeah. I think that that's where it becomes so different for everybody because that the reason why you're resisting is so different for absolutely everyone. It is. And, you, you know, it's interesting because I have worked with people that are very visual and they, they visualize this as kind of that separate being. I've worked with other clients who actually talk about almost a physical feeling like they cannot physically get themselves to move forward or it feels like a heavy weight or um, like they can't sit up at their computer and do what, what they want to do. So even the experience of it is so different, which makes it hard to identify and kind of pull apart from ourselves. It starts to feel like something wrong or a flaw within ourselves. And so by naming it and helping people identify how they're experiencing it, we can kind of separate that out a little bit. Yeah, like what is the resistant cord or, or why is that being here versus why are we not doing this task or this right. thing and then blaming ourselves? It's almost looking at what is the blockage? Why is it, how is it showing up? Why is it here? And then, because like you said there, it, it is a discomfort, right? It's a discomfort, a thing that's stopping us from doing it. But I, I feel like something that I've noticed, especially in the neurodevelopment world, is this thing of, it's it, if it is a change it's the unknown but sometimes it's not even a change sometimes a resistance is coming from a task that you've done many times but it's just not the right day or you know but that blockage is so different in every task and everything that we do in every person that I suppose looking at it from that perspective helps you to kind of identify what it is yes yeah and sometimes you're absolutely right. Sometimes it's that thing that someone is doing on a regular basis that just becomes boring or uninteresting. Yeah. And that's where, you know, what you're talking about, I think, with that resistance showing up because it's no longer interesting or exciting or no longer feels like it has value or there's just so many different reasons. Yeah. And also, I think what you said there about looking at it from it's a different being is it's it takes it away from you, from your character. That yes. Resistance is not a bad thing. It's not, a, sometimes it's not a choice. It's, there's a reason why it's there and it's just whether we're going to listen to it or not. Right. Absolutely. And it's also learning to identify what it is to get familiar with whether it's you know, a somatic, like a body experience, whether it's an emotional experience or thoughts, it's that process of trying to identify. And for neurodivergent brains, that can be, it can look very different and it can sometimes be a little more challenging to tap into that and figure out what it is and where it's coming from. So then I suppose that leads us into the next stage of when there's a resistance there, avoidance. And, and the kind of the next key or part of it. So avoidance for me is something that I see probably more than anything else in, in the ADHD world of, of avoiding, you know, dodging or fight flight response. It's a response to the resistance and that it's, we need to do something else or just get out of the situation because as human beings, yeah. we go, no, we're not safe. And then because of that resistance or that being, there we go, no, we're not safe. Let's avoid. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it seems like a very, um, it's a reactive stance and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm such a visual thinker, but I just picture someone with a fly swatter, just like swinging <laughs> in the air, just like, or, you know, if you're a tennis player or pickleball player or ping, whatever, just swinging and trying to make the things go away. And the trouble with that is they just keep coming back. It's like that machine. If you go to the batting cage or you play tennis and it just keeps shooting this stuff at you. It's just this very reactive stance. And there's this brief moment where it's like, shoo, I got that thing away from me. And then at some point in time, it's coming back. And there's so much anxiety in that cycle. Yeah. Because like you said there, avoiding is just putting it off for later. It, it right. does give you that in, and I know that short-term gain of, oh, it's gone out the way. You know, I've put my phone down or I've not looked at my email or whatever it is, put it down. But really it's it's 
I suppose the next step of, you know, we're resisting it. So rather than sitting in that discomfort of resistance, we're just going to re- be reactive and just throw it away. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What, what examples do you see of like avoidance in your work? Oh gosh. I mean, there's so many and the way that, that, and I include myself in this, that we choose, that we choose to avoid sometimes is so varied. Mm. Sometimes um, an activity that could be beneficial can be turned into a way of avoiding. Um, You know, it's usually with something that feels overwhelming or too large and there, we don't know how to reach that point of access. Where can we jump into this task or project or thing and and begin to work because it just feels so overwhelming I see that a lot yeah it's almost like I see it as like an emotional or kind of the polyvagal which I'll write in the bottom if no one knows what that is is that you know nervous system response like reaction to no this makes me feel unsafe I'm not going to do this anymore and like whether that's if it's bought like what I notice if it's boring or it's too much of a demand right now or it's you know there's something else going on procrastination right you know where we go and do something else but actually the reason why we're seeking something else or or seeking avoidance is because we're actually resisting the task in hand yes and and you know you said a word in there that about feeling safe and that that is our brain feeling that discomfort and you know then we just develop this habit of thinking it doesn't feel safe to approach this task or project or conversation and so um it's just that kind of swatting away of not wanting to do it or not feeling safe and then it's just this repeated cycle so then we have to emotionally repair that and then we just keep avoiding and avoiding and it just leads to increased anxiety and then increased avoiding and it's so hard to just hit the brakes on that and and step out of it and gain perspective yeah and that's what we're hoping to do here by talking about it right we talk about it we we evoke awareness yes definitely so we'll be back in round two and we're going to kind of talk about we've talked about them as separate entities but actually they're very entwined and I and I I I can already see it and I and I bet some people can in their lives so we're going to come back and we'll kind of dig a bit deeper and we're out if you would like any more information on indigo hub or our Indigo support group, then please check out our website below or our link to our social media platforms or email at indigohub.adhd at gmail.com. If you would like to offer any comments, feedback, get support, or if you're interested in the world hearing your story, then please reach out through any of our avenues. As said before, have a positive week. Check in again later. And we're out. Welcome back. And we're back. And if you didn't join us before, then we mind now. But we were talking to Holly and we were talking about resistance versus avoidance. And we, we kind of spoke a little bit about what each of them are. Now we're going to kind of talk about how they intertwine. And something that I always think is like cause and impact, almost kind of resistance is usually the cause of what's going on and avoidance is usually what we see or the behavior because of the resistance so it's a bit like what what we were saying a bit like an iceberg right resistance is usually a bit underneath and the the kind of avoidance is what happens after it's the response or the reaction from the resistance yes and i i love that image and i think what we tend to see in the clients we work with is, are the avoidance behaviors and we forget what's underneath that, what's really driving that. And we just kind of go right for what, you know, what are, what is causing the avoidance instead of digging a little deeper into what's behind it. Yeah. Like stop going on your phone or 
why am I so stupid? I've not done my emails rather than why have I not done my emails? You know, what was I resisting? Exactly. So again, we talk about that inner critic or it's even just those external voices. Well, why isn't this done? Or why haven't you started this task? And there's always, if we take the time, there's always something that's underneath it. And that's why I think kind of go, looking at the resistance first is a good way of rather than it's almost like flipping the perspective of looking at why it's happening versus let's look at the avoidance first so like yeah. we were talking about or in the break we were talking about kind of that everyone's experience with resistance is very very different it is it's such an individual experience um you know there can be emotional things going on actually Natasha you gave a great example of that when we were talking over the break um, um yeah so like I was saying that there's there can be patterns of resistance and looking for those patterns whether it's like I'm really bored or you know this and I like to look at it with 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 kind of specifically when I work with clients with ADHD is it's um the analogy and I, this is not my analogy I got this from someone but it's uh, dust and whether it's too difficult or it's too if it's unclear or it's scary or tedious because yeah. usually the reason why we're not the resistance is happening is because a task might be too difficult it might be that we can't do it on that day it might be unclear we don't know the steps it's scary we've got an emotional response to it or it's just really boring so why on earth would we want to do it exactly exactly I mean it could look like someone being unwilling to take a little bit of a deeper dive into what's going on. It could be a specific task. You know, when I work with um, students or adults and they start to get really hard on themselves about some big paper or proposal, usually if we get underneath a little bit, it's, it's because there's unclear expectations or something isn't understood or there's skills required that, you know, it feels scary to not have them or it's too hard. So there's just so many different things that that can be going on but, even within one person. But like you said there, like it's like that separate entity, somebody else there, because we're doing all this stuff that we instantly go, oh, it's our fault. We're not doing this. When actually, no, mm -hmm. it's something, there's a reason. Is it because the task in hand is, is boring? Why would anyone want to do anything boring? And Ross Green says this really cool thing. He says that kids would if we could. Everybody wants to succeed. Yes. But it's whether you can in that environment, in that task. And if there's a resistance, then it means that even how much you try, there's something that's stopping you. It's something that's making you not be able to do it in that moment. And that is where looking at the pattern can help you then not avoid. I agree. And I think especially with, you know, ADHD, neurodivergent individuals, the, the messaging, no matter how old a person is, they've, they've likely received a lot of negative messaging. Mm -hmm. Definitely by the time that you and I start to work with, with someone and it's so important to validate that things are hard, that resistance is normal, that avoidance is normal, that what you're feeling is normal to normalize it, to call it out into the open, because otherwise it just stays this deeply buried internal experience, which just can tear a person down to to the point of really struggling and then that in itself can then make you resist other things and avoid other things because exactly you don't feel we're worthy which then might be become the resistance it's almost looking at the resistance as something else something external yeah it's amazing when some of that perspective starts to be gained that a specific thing that someone might come, you know, to you or I to coach with, it it just the it just opens wide because those those beliefs and those behaviors all of a sudden start to become freed and then it can impact in a positive way so many other areas of a person's life. Mm -hmm. So that, I suppose that comes into kind of the next part of avoidance because we what we're talking about there is with the patterns of why we resist it. And then 
then it's looking at okay you're resisting it because of this and then what are your habits for avoidance because sometimes like ways of procrastination feels like it's the only option like like I said if something's really difficult you're not going to want to do it you, you you can't do it if it's that difficult really so we avoid because it's the only option and it's right, yeah. you know when you when you take the resistance and then you look at your avoidance it's if we if we look at the resistance and we find a way to not resist then avoidance won't happen yeah or what the the process of that could be starting to recognize what's going on yeah and then being able to catch yourself in it and you know we were talking about how important it is to have another person some sort of support system whether that's a partner, a parent, a therapist, a coach that can help you get that perspective because so much of this is internal. It can be really challenging to identify, you know, internal habits and thinking patterns of thinking. Yeah. And I I agree that I I was, I was mentioned to you, you know, I worked with a few people, especially teenagers, and I'd ask them questions about their ADHD or like their emotions in the blood. I don't know. I don't know don't know and I was like wait a minute they do know because I, like, I don't know I don't know and then when I started talking to them about like their interests that they, they flowed right and I, so then I asked them what makes you don't know about this topic and they're like well oh, don't I don't like that topic it's hard and then there you know the, the resistance and the avoidance is a don't know but sometimes we just think oh we're avoiding I'm gonna say I don't know and we then it becomes a learned behavior because it it's it's more comfortable to avoid something in the moment than it is to look um, at the resistance and that's why someone else can help you to develop that perspective or to just take the burden off you yeah of, it's okay of why you're resisting yeah and when oftentimes as we get closer to the root of it it starts to lift some of that shame it starts to depersonalize it I think the fear that comes around looking into this deeper is that it it's going to reveal all these flaws, these fundamental flaws. And, and really what happens is if, if someone can find the courage to take a look at it, is it begins to depersonalize it mm-hmm. and it starts to take all of that weight and all of that stuff off and realize that it is a very kind of normal and human experience. Mm-hmm. And it, it goes to what you were saying about developing self-awareness yeah and like and that in about pausing and noticing what happens so then we get ready to address something we become confident to go no I'm not going to resist this today you know or you know oh my emails I know that my emails are too long it's too tedious okay so I'm going to do one email and then I'm going to go and do something fun and then come back and do two rather than oh, I've got to look at all my emails today. What's wrong with me? Why am I not doing it? Right, right. And you know what? I'm just sitting here thinking that, you know, that that self-awareness that comes with kind of pausing and noticing yeah. what's happening as we're getting ready. And it's that, it really comes back to that moment of mindfulness, like making a conscious decision. So maybe it's a day where things are really not going well and you decide today, I'm not going to check email because I don't have the capacity yeah. And it will be a conscious decision. It won't be a habitual behavior that you will then beat yourself up for later. You're going to say today's really hard day. I don't have the capacity. I choose not to. And I'm aware of that. And I will deal with the consequences or, you know, whatever tomorrow or later when I can. And what you've done there is you're able to see the patterns of resistance, work out why you're resisting. And then rather than treat avoidance, make the make the present kind of conscious choice to respond in a different way yes and and that is where it takes it depersonalizes and it takes away some of that shame and you know that negative messaging that's coming internally and it empowers someone to be able to make choices and to be conscious about it yeah wow yeah that's a that's a really nice way to wrap up. Yeah. It wasn't even planned. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so any last words? Well, thank you for, again, for talking about a really hard topic that I think is so important to bring out into the open. It's really, it's exciting to talk about it because I think we need to discuss these things more. Yeah, and I, and I do agree as well. I think that this is something that I don't, people just go, I don't do it. I, you know, I don't do it. And it's like, well, why don't you do it? And it's about kind of tapping into that deeper topics and and then stuff that we see, which is why we, why I wanted to start bringing these episodes to the, 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 the kind of platform of starting to talk about these difficult things so we can help change them. Yeah. yeah. So if you feel like you need a coach or anything else, then please reach out. Okay. Holly is amazing. And I'd say I'm all right myself. So <laughs> well, you're amazing. I'll say it for you. You're amazing too. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. And if you need any other support, if you've got any comments, then please reach out to either of us and both our emails and websites and everything are below if you need that. So Holly, I hope we've not put you off. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll be back again. Absolutely. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So we leave another podcast with another kind of deep message about, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to end it with Ross Green. We could, we would, if we could. And if we can't, that's okay. But we've just got to find why and then figure out another way around it. And whether that's through yourself, through self-awareness or through support, don't do it alone. This stuff is hard, right? It's never easy. If it was easy, then we wouldn't be here, right? We wouldn't have jobs. Um, yeah. But what can be on the other side can be so much more beneficial. So we'll be back in two weeks with another episode, either with another guest or with Holly or myself and diving into more diff topics. And we're out. Dear Diary, as Indigo Hub's process goes on, it makes me stop and wonder, could there be more for us? More light, more experience and more ways to see the world through our own eyes. I think this journey will be...